Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen your next speaker. He's so humble. He's like, don't even do a bio for me. I'll just get right into it. But I thought, no, let me do a bio uh, for those that don't know uh, the professor. And I'll just quickly do the bio um, as we get into it. Um, he's a full professor of sport and exercise medicine at the uh, Faculty of Health Sciences, uh, University of Pretoria in South Africa. He's also a specialist sports and exercise medicine physician who regularly consults with athletes on all levels. He holds an MBBCH from the University of Edwardshire with Cum Laude, a MSc Med from University of Cape Town, and an MD equivalent to a PhD degree of the University of Cape Town, and, and is a fellow American Colle uh, which College of Sports Medicine, as well as the International Sports Medicine Federation. Ladies and gentlemen, his CV is very long. I don't want to take up any of your time. A very warm round of applause to Professor Schwalnes. Thank you very much for that. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and um, I just want to thank a uh, previous speaker for uh, actually the speakers of the morning for fantastic talks that hopefully have been inspiring to you all. So I've been given a task to talk about a common problem, uh, and it is a medical problem, and you saw that uh, Ajax has a big medical and science department, so I am sure the people that are working there see this all the time. And that is the problem of an infection and how do we give best guidance uh, for coaches and obviously the athletes and parents and so on in terms of getting them back to sport quickly, um, uh, following perhaps, as you've indicated, sort of a front foot or aggressive approach to this. So I'm going to also, I like questions. Uh, there was also a speaker this morning I who spoke about questions. I like to answer maybe four questions and then you know, bring it home with a few take home messages for all of you. So for us, uh, when we see someone or when you see someone or when you have an infection yourself, there are two things that are really basic. The first one is, um, how does the body of an athlete or an individual respond to an infection and how does it respond to exercise? And I'll come back to that because this is, these two things, if we have an athlete with an infection and we ask them to go do training or in a competition, then the body has to work out what to do with these two things. So we'll speak a little bit about that. For yourselves and for your athletes, you may ask the following question, number two there, um, as the most important question. Athlete is often interested in that. When I have an infection, what does it do to my ability to play sport, by sports performance? And perhaps even for how long after an infection does that last? Uh, for a coach, uh, an athlete will say, you know, I was a bit sick on Monday. I feel fine today, although I'm a little bit, uh, you know, but I'll be fine on Saturday. You have to make a decision. Do you put player A or player B in the team? Because player A who had the infection, you don't quite know whether or not this athlete has a, had a problem uh, with the infection causing them to have a reduction in performance. So that's the second question. For us, and for you, and particularly for athletes, the next one is also very important. And that, if I have an infection and I do exercise, is there a risk that there's a problem developing? And I'm going to touch on that. And then the fourth question is really the main thing of this afternoon, but I have to you know, do the others first, is what sort of advice do we give about when you can go back to, uh, and then we'll, as I said, we'll finish it off. So let's do the basics. So there are two things here. The body is under stress, and I, and I use the term stress broadly, physiological stress, if you like, or how your body systems function. It is under stress when you train. And that's the purpose of training, is to put the body under stress in order for the body to adapt. So if you don't do that, then it's not a proper training session. Of course, in a competition environment, we expect the athletes to perform at a high level. So that's the exercising athlete. So the body systems are responding to the exercise or the training session. On the other hand, when you have an infection, there's an invasion of your normal workings of the body by the, uh, by the bug or the infective organism or the microbe. So the body's also trying to cope with that. And when those two things go together, you have an infection and you are asking the athlete to exercise and subject them to this uh, physiological stress, there may be some consequences. And we spoke about those already and I'll go through them. Uh, it may be performance related or it may be medically related. So this is just a slide and I want you to look at the pictures, not the reading. <laughs> For those of you who understand physiology or how the body responds, of course you can read the reading. This is a summary of what our students learn in the first few years of their study on exercise physiology, okay? 
essentially comes down to the following, and this is the only point I want to make from the slide, is that when your uh, athlete undergoes, and we heard some nice things about, are you going to have a hard training session, a medium or a soft one? But if you're going to have a hard training session, then your body's organ systems all uh, are registering this and adapt. So it's your brain, it's your heart, it's your lungs, it's your blood flow, it's your liver, it's your stomach, and so forth. Okay, so they, all I, the only point is here, all your organ systems virtually are putting, being put under physiological stress. And that's the body's response to exercise. What happens if you now take the same body and you have an infection? And we call it a microbe, you can call it a bug, it's the same thing, all right? If a bug enters your body, um, and we'll talk a little bit about some bugs, but essentially there are hundreds, if not thousands of different bugs, viruses, bacteria, parasites, and so forth, worms and things that can give and cause the infections. Of course, I can't go through each and every one of those. Um, but you have an, there's, there's an invasion. This bug goes into the body, either through the skin or through the airway system or through your mouth when you eat something that's not good and so forth. But the bug goes into the body. And there are really generally two types of responses that the body has. The one is a general response. The body says, here's a bug, doesn't matter what the bug is, but I'm going to respond to this, I'm going to try and get rid of it. I have a whole lot of mechanisms to get rid of it. And we call that a general, non-specific response. And in medicine, we are very insecure, so we try to always give you a confusing uh, term. And so, you know, that's called acute phase response, okay? But don't worry about that. It's just your general response to an illness. And it's a very complicated response. Essentially, your body tries to deal with this by generating a whole new lots of chemicals in the body which then affect the body okay so that's sort of a general response i'll show you just one slide again with pictures about how complicated that can be but all of us it doesn't matter what sort of infection you have it's the same or a very similar response of course there are different bugs so there's some bugs that affect your bladder and you get a bladder infection the others affect your skin you get a skin infection and so forth so there's a bug specific response okay so there are two things that the body is dealing with, a general approach to this problem and then specifically where the infection may be. The most common ones, we'll get to that, are your, your respiratory tract, so flu-like illnesses. And we call that a specific organ or tissue response. And again, that may have consequences on how you, how you feel and how you can perform. So this is, a, again, a one of those complicated slides. Again, maybe just keep the other slide of your exercise in mind, and it had all those different organ systems. And I want to show you on this slide just the same thing. When a bug goes into your body, there's uh, effects on your muscle, there's effects on your liver, your brain, your muscles and your nervous system. Remember the muscles and nervous system are the key elements together with the brain on, that make you exercise or make you perform in sport. And then it has a whole lot of things on your metabolism, so the ability to generate energy, and also your endocrine or hormonal system. So these are, this is the general response to, exercise, uh, to an infection. I'm not going to go to, as I said to you, <coughs> in detail about every specific bug. Um, and every specific bug has a specific way of presenting. You know that maybe malaria doesn't uh, give you the same, exactly the same uh, response to uh, the TB does, or perhaps does a blood infection does. You know that. In sport, in athletes, there are four main things, four main systems, if you like, that are commonly affected. We've done lots of studies on that. We know the kind of infections that athletes are perhaps more predisposed to. By far the most common one is the respiratory tract. Maybe not surprising because generally all of us, that's also the most common one. But athletes have a little bit of a bigger disadvantage because when you exercise, you are getting a lot of air in and out of your lungs. And therefore, the upper respiratory tract, where your nose and your upper part of your throat and, the and then your chest, get exposed to lots of go uh, bugs going in and out. Particularly in a team environment, and we had a nice video now what it, a locker room looks like, you all know that. There's a lot of exchange of um, coughing and air that goes in and out that may contain some bugs that somebody picked up when they were the evening sitting watching TV with little brother who was at school. Okay, so the point about is the respiratory tract is the most common system where we get infections in athletes. And a lot of what I'm going to say really is I'm going to focus on that. All right. So when you have a bug, and let's call it a respiratory bug, going into the system, then you have these two responses, a general response, and then the bug has a specific area that it targets. Okay. So what is the general uh, 
complaint that a, an athlete will come to you as a coach uh, when they're not feeling that well. And it, here's a, I'm going to give you, this is probably one of the most important slides, and I'm going to re-emphasize that a bit later. The athlete will complain of the symptoms, if you the things that, how the body responds to that general, uh, uh, that the general response of the body will have some symptoms. And it will also, the athlete will also may have uh, some things that will be very specific. So they will, may complain of a sore throat or a blocked or runny nose or I'm starting to lose my voice and so on if that is a respiratory tract infection. And they will also complain of something else. If it's a lower, lower pain in the lower part of the tummy, that may be the early part of a urinary tract infection, etc. So it may be different, but these symptoms are often in a local area. In other words, one area of the body. But the red flag, and that's why I put all of that in red, are the whole body symptoms. In other words, your, this athlete's body is not fighting just a small little pimple in on the on the on the on the skin somewhere it's actually fighting the whole the whole body is fighting uh, the organism and then they will have these symptoms which are on in red there things like loss of appetite that may or may not be specific but if that's coupled with things like general fatigue more than usual they may be dehydrated have a headache and then some really important ones like a fever if you have a fever either sweating at night or um, uh, during the day and um, uh, just feel very, very warm, and you can obviously measure that with the temperature. They may cough. They may have an increased heart rate. Uh, if, you, if they have a heart rate monitor, like I'm sure your athletes sometimes have, then that's easy. But nowadays, you know, there are lots of things that, you can, uh, that athletes wear, and they, you can measure the heart rate. Or you can just put your finger and measure it. Um, they may, and this is an important one, they may have muscle joint aches and pains, uh, which indicate that this is the general response, remember? And that's a very important one. Or they may have, and that's why I selected that test there, <laughs> altered balance and coordination. Some of it is because there's a direct effect on the ear canal, and others are that just the general response affects the ability of the nervous system to control the muscle. So these are the kind of things that are really important. And I'm going to make right at this point this important uh, guideline for you. If you have an athlete comes to the afternoon training session, they say they're not feeling well, and they have some of these red ones, then I would say to them, you send them to the doctor because that probably needs further checkups, okay? So that's the uh, answer to the first question, the general, the basics. Uh, let's now talk a little bit about <coughs> the uh, relationship between having an infection and does it uh, affect the performance in sport. Actually, <coughs> when we go to the science around this, uh, around the world, there are not that many people that have properly looked at that. So we have... Just some uh, studies, and we are doing quite a bit at Semley now to try and work that out a bit. This is a table, and it's complicated, <coughs> and I apologize for that. It's, I just put it in. I thought of taking it out, but there are some people here that I know that are perhaps physiology or sports scientists uh, that want to know a little bit more detail. I'm going to summarize all of this for you in a little bit easier. But effectively, there are uh, this, uh, these uh, uh, responses to the body that the general response I was talking about that can decrease or affect, negatively affect the performance. And, and, and on your left-hand side on, these, uh, on this table, we talked about the nervous system and the muscle. And generally speaking, if you have an infection where there's this general response, let's call it about a 15% reduction in strength and muscle endurance. And you, you know, we can measure that with some of the tests that were mentioned. On the heart... Um, and cardiovascular system, or the so-called aerobic exercise, there's up to, not necessarily always, but up to about a 25% decrease in performance when they are sick. And on the metabolism side, remember I mentioned that, the part of the problem is that the, uh, a lot of energy is consumed by, by your body to try and sort out the infection, and there's decreased um, ability of the energy to be supplied to the muscle, and that's maybe one of the mechanisms. So this is a big table, but let me show you, we have done a study in about um, over 300 triathletes in a Ironman where we asked them uh, whether they've had any of these symptoms that I mentioned there. You know, the localized symptoms and the systemic or general symptoms. And then we measured their performance time. And effectively, this is the race time. And those athletes who had the uh, general symptoms... In other words, that whole body response, 
their times were reduced by 4 to 5% at least. And in another study, much bigger study, over 6,000 runners that participated in a half marathon or an ultra marathon, again, the same thing. But here we looked at what is the response if they have this uh, general response or only the local infections versus no symptoms of an infection and how many of them ended up not finishing the race. And the black is the group that were completely healthy. The green is the group that had some local symptoms and the red are the ones that had uh, whole body symptoms. And this is in the last one to two weeks before the race, okay? So uh, if you had symptoms before the race, let's say you're training a marathon runner and they're going to, uh, to Doha in a, few we uh, in a couple of weeks' time, then uh, if they have a, a systemic, this whole body response, they are really at a disadvantage when it comes down to the race, okay? And that's one of the reasons why we really try to work on preventing these things. This is an interesting one, and this is the last one which, we, which I want to put up with respect to, you know, the, the uh, relationship between these different symptoms and illnesses and then uh, ability not to finish. If we break it up how close to the race day these symptoms were, you can go from left to right, so again, the left, the black bar, those are the, uh, the athletes um, that didn't have any symptoms, and that's 1.6% uh, of them did not finish the race. Again, this is the two oceans races. If they have only the local symptoms, and but they had it a few days ago, then it's 2.3. Then it goes up to local, but just 24 hours before the race, that's the next green bar. And then the whole body response more than one day ago, before the race, eight, and then when they have the whole body response and they are going to run, they still run the race on the race day. And they have about an 11 times, 10 times greater chance of not finishing the race, okay? So that gives you an idea that breaking up these symptoms into the local symptoms and the general symptoms is very important. So I'm going to skip that. So Let's uh, summarize that uh, next question. Does an infection affect an athlete's ability to perform sport? We have, I showed you the table, which is all science and laboratory studies. I showed you the Ironman and I showed you the two oceans and the answer is it does. Which parts of the body? Well, we spoke about strength being reduced by anything from, 10, from uh, 15%. So maybe you have a 10% rule here. That's probably an easy number, 10 to 15% rule. Strength, endurance, the cardiovascular endurance may be a little bit more, and then the, what is not that measured in a percentage well, but is also the neuromuscular control. So does uh, an infection, if you are coaching gymnasts, then that last one is actually very, very important. Okay, what about the risk of medical problems? And again, this slide is just to re-emphasize that when you exercise, there are lots of organ systems that uh, are needed to function properly for you to adapt. The uh, uh, <coughs> medical problems that we think about or worry about are bug-specific as well. And again, these are the common areas. So the respiratory tract is the common one in sport. And these many, many different bugs can cause real serious, potentially real serious problems. Uh, for instance, in the heart, sorry, that's not heart T, that's heart. Uh, and you can get an inflammation of the heart muscle, which is very serious. And I'll show you the next slide just to make that point. You can get an inflammation of the muscle and you have increased muscle breakdown. You can get uh, dehydration when you have uh, vomiting and diarrhea, gastroenteritis, which can lead to kidney complications and electrolyte changes. So there's a lot of uh, stuff around here. And we have to consider this when we see an athlete with an infection. And I just want to make this point. The one really serious one that we always look for is the heart. So there are some viruses that can cause an inflammation of the heart. And in about 10% of the time, when a young athlete dies during exercise, and unfortunately it's rare, but unfortunately it does happen every now and again, it is as a result of an infection. And remember, we can't screen for that before. And so we talked about cardiac screening, but we can't screen for that. So we have to, and your, you as coaches have to be aware of this, just so that you, uh, that you can also play a role in preventing this kind of thing. 
And again, I mean, this is just a slide that I've put in for the ones that are really people that are really interested. These medical complications, the potential ones, are a uh, 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 in a variety of these organs like your heart, your nervous system, your muscle, your lungs, your kidneys. Uh, a, a very important one is actually the temperature control. So fever, when you get a fever from an infection, it alters your ability to control your body temperature. And you know that when you, ex particularly doing a sport in a hot, humid environment, and then it's a big problem. Your body can't regulate the temperature. Just wanted to mention that maybe specifically. So in summary of that question, does an infection increase the risk of problems? Rare, but it does occur, and it's a variety of different organ systems, and, and we've mentioned those before. We are not really aware of people who've measured that very well. We did, again, a study in runners, and we looked at how many runners who have symptoms of an acute illness before a race end up having, unfortunately, to see us in the medical tent with a complication. And we looked at uh, runners with a, uh, no symptoms and then runners with had an acute illness. And again, the risk of uh, ending up in a medical tent when you have an acute illness and still exercise is double than anybody else. Okay, so two to three times greater. All right, I'm going to devote the last uh, few minutes because I know we want to try and finish it, uh, you know, in a few minutes so that maybe there's a question or two and then uh, there's uh, lunchtime. What uh, can an athlete with an infection, when can an athlete with an infection go back to training and how do we decide that? And that's probably one of the most important things that we do when we see an athlete and, and, and try to give you advice. So I come back to this. These are, this is the first question. Does my athlete, and if you can answer that question and if it's yourself that's going to decide, am I going to train this morning or not? Do I have any general symptoms or signs that general body responds? an infection. I'm not feeling that well. Do I have a fever? Have I lost a lot of water from diarrhea or, uh, you know, fever and sweating? Am I dehydrated? Is my fatigue more than what I normally would feel? Have I have any muscle joint aches and pains, whole body aches and pains? Uh, are my muscles just feeling very tired? Have I got an increased heart rate? Have I got altered balance and coordination? Perhaps even have I got chest pain? So these are the kind of things that you, if you answer to that, you shouldn't train. Okay, that's the first question we always ask. The second question, and I said to you, when you've got that, you probably know to see your doctor. So when your doctor examines you or sees you, they will ask the same questions. They'll check for that again. But they will also now look for the specific infection. We call it the end organ or the specific organ. And we will look for, uh, do tests that will look whether or not, and I'll put an, uh, a squiggle thing on there. That's an electrocardiogram or an ECG. We'll do things like that to check whether the heart is affected by this particular infection or not. So that's question two. Do we find any specific areas uh, in the body, the organs that are affected? When we've diagnosed that, we would put the athlete off training and we would monitor. And I'll show you in the next slide the whole diagram as to how we go about. But nowadays, we, when we make a decision about getting back to sport, we follow a very similar principle that we do with injuries. We do it, we, it's not a question of, yes, of course you can go back to full training, or no, you can't. It is a graded or gradual response. And we're starting to use much more commonly a sub-maximal exercise. So we get them and we exercise them when we monitor a whole lot of things, their heart rate, blood pressure, heart rate recovery, and the other things that we monitor like heart rate variability and so forth. We test the lungs, we measure the temperature and so on. And that, but in that way we can see if the body the athlete's body in response to this infection is healing itself and are these things returning back to normal. So this becomes a very important another component of our assessment. All right, how do we make this decision? We use this kind of diagram or this flow chart that we try to teach the doctors. We say you have an athlete with an acute infection. You, we take a good, you, you know, we listen to what they complain about. We examine them. We may do some blood tests and laboratories and we say, is there evidence of a whole body? And remember I said acute phase response, okay, a whole body response. If the answer to that is whole body response is, there's a whole body response to this, it's no exercise, okay? Because of the reasons I spoke about in terms of those potential complications. F for how long? Well, 24 to 48 hours and then we'll reassess, okay? If there's no evidence of the whole body response, we go to the next question. What about the specific organs? So we look for the lungs, we do tests for the heart, we may do some tests for the kidney if it's indicated, and so forth. We check for the specific um, organ response. 
If there's a problem in the organ, let's say the heart rate shows abnormalities and inflammation in the heart muscle, yes, of course, no exercise. Again, we reassess it. If that's no, in the past we would say, coach, I would rather let coach you go back to training. But, no, but in, and you don't quite know, and you say, that, okay, you've been away for three days, you've got a lot of time to things to make up, go for it all the way. We don't do it anymore. We now get them, the, the, the athlete to do a test and we see how the body responds to exercise because we need to measure to see if it's actually returned back to normal. So we do what we call a sub-maximal exercise test. If we see that the response to that by the things we measure is abnormal, back to the, the red block there, no exercise, reassess. Uh, if it's normal, then we say you can go back to training and again, it's a graded return to training. It's a bit like concussion. I'm sure you've had things on concussion. We don't say... Uh, no, you, you know, you, it's, a, it's always a few days and we get you back to training. So that's the 2019 current approach and that's what we teach. We, I was in Tokyo a few weeks ago teaching this to the advanced, uh, the advanced team physician course to the Olympic doctors. So this is what we do. What about, um, what about a little bit of a glimpse in the future before I end up? I spoke about the many, many bugs that can cause all different specific types of things. And that is probably what we're doing in the future. So here at Semley, we've got some brand new technology. It's called a PCR machine. It measures the genetic makeup of different viruses and bacteria. And when uh, it's an office-based uh, device, it looks like that in the picture on the right-hand side. And essentially what we do is we can take, a, you've got a sore throat, we can take a swab of the, of the throat, and then uh, we subject it to a uh, laboratory test, which we do right there. And this is just a stepwise approach to it. And it takes about an hour and a bit from the time that we take the swab until we get the result. And we can tell from that that you've got <coughs> bug A, B, C, D, or you know, the bug 23. And the modern approach to this is that because the bugs are all different and their responses, how they affect the body are different, this will refine the way we would give advice. So we've tested a few of these athletes already. And this is a, just a a pie chart of the different types of bugs that have caused a respiratory tract infection in some of the, the tux athletes. And I know there's some people in the audience who have actually been part of this, that we took a swab from them. So you can see here that the yellow one, this was last year, influenza B, uh, was actually the, one of the most common ones that we saw. So why is this important, and how can this be helping us in future? I said to you, you've got these local symptoms, and you've got the systemic symptoms. And this would be a number of players who've got local and systemic symptoms. And at the moment, we give the advice that we give. But in future, and this is what we've shown, we can take two bugs. And the names perhaps are not that important for you. Just call them bug A and bug B, bug A on the left and bug B on the right. So you can see that those three little squiggle graphs are related to the local symptoms, as I said. And then the green one is the systemic symptoms, the whole body symptoms. And we track those over time. And you can see that bug A took the athlete 13 to 14 days to get rid of those symptoms that the uh, general body symptoms. Very different to bug B, which um, took six days. In fact, four, after four days, the general body symptoms were almost away. So the modern approach will be, in, in, if, in, in fact, from this time out, we we'll, we'll start to get more experience with this, that if somebody comes to us, we'll do this, we'll d identify the very specific bug, and I can say to the coach, this, uh, this athlete, although they have the same kind of symptoms of a sore throat and a fever and this, this uh, athlete is likely to be out of competition and training for two weeks and the other one is four days. So this is the new approach and it's, a, uh, it's, it's probably in three or four years' time it'll be standard approach. So I'm going to finish off with the, the, the so-called uh, take-home messages and I've got like one minute. So acute infections, and we spoke about mostly respiratory infections, are very common in athletes. They're more common in athletes actually that train really hard than uh, perhaps the general population. We didn't really speak about all the risk factors, but we know that there are some risk factors, and maybe that's another time uh, we can talk about how you prevent uh, these infections. But you identify the risk factors, and then you get your athletes to do things like hand hygiene, etc. And when you do these prevention factors, we know, we've done in other studies, that you can reduce the risk. Uh, what I spoke about today was the athlete's response, the general response, and then the bug-specific response. And as a result of that infection, the athlete has a reduction in their exercise ability, but we are at the back of our mind are also the medical problems. 
the way to deal with when an athlete can go back uh, is a series of questions, maybe three questions. Are there general symptoms, the whole body symptoms? If yes, no exercise. In your case, if yes, probably go and see your doctor. When they see the doctor, I'm asking another question. Are there signs that this bug has specific organs that they targeted, the heart, the lung, etc.? If yes, no exercise. Then we monitor that 24 hours later. So how do we track the recovery? Once the, all the whole body symptoms are gone, we do an exercise test and we check what the response of the athlete is to that. If it's normal, then grade it back to play. If it's abnormal, we wait again, all right? In future, to finish off, I think we'll get a much better at this. One of the main reasons is that we'll be looking at the specific bugs causing, it, causing an infection and how that affects it. Thank you very much for your time. Well, Professor, you spoke about a whole body response, and I think a whole lot of us can confess right now that our whole bodies are responding to the hunger needs. <laughs> <laughs> but Professor, thank you so much. That was incredibly informative. I do trust that a lot of us have learned a lot from that. And just as a token of our appreciation from the department as well as the assembly, very thank you much for, for, for just what you've shared with us. Right, and then ladies and gentlemen, oh, whole body response. So right, lunch.